Hello, my name is Orkun and welcome back to my channel where today I'm doing another Zoya video. Uh, the Zoya, of course, is the patchable digital modular synthesizer in a little box where the only limitation is your imagination and the CPU, of course. Right, so in today's video I'm doing a little follow-up to my previous one in which I demonstrated what is known as the Carplus Strong algorithm, uh, which is the most basic method for creating physical modeling synthesis uh, in synthesizers. Uh, basically what it does is you have a starting sound, uh, usually quite a short snappy sound, uh, that is supposed to mimic the impact of something on a percussion instrument or, or something hitting a string. And then you run that sound into a delay or a delay line on, on the Zoya. And from the delay line, you send it into a, a low pass filter and then you send it from the low pass filter to the audio output and back into the delay line, making sure not to run it too hot so it uh, overdrives and uh, creates a beeping sound. And that is the most basic physical modeling synthesis you can do. Uh, and uh, it uh, was invented by somebody called Carplus and Strong, I presume, hence the name. Um, and it's great for uh, percussion sounds, for plucked strings. Uh, you can get different percussion sounds as well. You can get things like hand drums. Uh, you can get um, slightly a bit like mallets and woods and claves uh, kind of sounds, also glassy sounds as well. Uh, so it's a very versatile uh, little little thing. Actually, I'll just play you just so I got. So this is just, uh, yeah, just a few different sounds running through there. So that's that's just an evolution of the patch I had last time. Um, but then um, I was thinking uh, a few days ago that, uh, or yesterday I should say, that it would be interesting to find out how to also create more continuous sounds. And I remember that a while back I was trying to do something entirely different with... Um, I was trying to tune noises through filters uh, for, uh, I think it was when I was working on my distortion patch, and I came across this kind of effect. And you can see this, uh, <laughs> this patch is called Can't Whistle because it sounds like somebody who's trying to whistle, but they don't know how to do it. But when I was doing the couple of strong algorithm for the other patch, I was thinking that, hmm, what if I run this kind of sound, a tuned noise, into a couple of strong resonator, um, and the result is as follows. So I can just show it what we got here. Uh, with some modifications, of course, this is how it ended up. Yes, it sounds like bowed strings. And I thought that was quite interesting. So um, so I worked a little bit on this patch now and uh, it can create quite interesting range of bowed string sounds. Uh, of course, they are not just like the percussion um, in, in the other video um, using the resonator. Um, it's hard to tune it in a useful way. So I'm sure there are, uh, that's, I haven't got that far yet, uh, but um, as a kind of atmospheric string effect, uh, it can work really well. It certainly creates quite a sort of a dark, foreboding, brooding string sound um, that can be quite useful in, in um, soundscapes, dark ambient, things like that. Uh, you can make it into a drone, I suppose, as well. Just keeps going. Um, and that is the uh, subject of today's patch. How to create at uh, least one possible way of creating a bold string sound uh, on the Zoya with, um, with, uh, with, uh, with tuned noise. I would call it tuned noise, yes, filtered noise. 
Um, so I'll just demonstrate how this works now. Um, so the starting point is noise. Um, so the first, very first sound module I've got here is a noise. And it sounds like this. Um, and that's a starting sound. So I've run that into a VCA um, that is uh, got its volume, um, its amplitude de decided by an ADSR envelope here. And after the ADSR envelope, it sounds like this. Uh, so just a little word about the ADSR envelope. In the uh, percussion patch I did uh, last time, the um, the sustain and release stages of the ADSR envelope were not used. But because this is a continuous sound, um, the values you put in for sustain and release actually make a big difference to the sound quality. So it's got a longer attack generally now than you need because you have the attack of the bow on the string. Uh, you need a little bit of time. There's a bit of decay. Uh, sustain usually sounds quite good with sustain around half, so 0 0.47 is what I've got now, but I've made it adjustable, of course. Uh, and then release, uh, not too long, uh, it sounds a little bit unnatural, but too long a release. Uh, something like 240 milliseconds is a good uh, time, but you can experiment if you want to try this at home, of course, uh, and try different things. So at the moment, those are the values, and this is what that sounds like. Uh, from the VCA, I'm sending it to two places now, and um, and this is where the thing comes in because I was working on distortion. You can see here that I've actually got it through a overdrive and distortion module here, uh, which doesn't make a huge difference to the sound, but it seems to make a difference further down the line how the sound starts out and it sounds more uh, natural as a string sound if I also run it through an overdrive as well. Uh, so the overdrive stage, um, so I'm just making, I've just got these buttons on the side here now to listen to it at different places in the audio chain, and I've just done that for the sake of demonstration. I'm not going to show you how to do this now, but um, I think I've done something like this before and explained that in another video. And if I can find that, I will link to that up here, otherwise I will do a video on it some other day. Um, anyway, so so after the ADSR, after the overdrive, the difference isn't huge, but it does seem to make a difference further down the line. Uh, in the little shaping of the initial sound is um, amplified uh, because of the resonator as well. So the output of the distortion and also the output of the VCA also goes into a multi-filter and this is set to uh, a bell curve. Um, I've tried different things here. I tried band pass, but it seemed the most pleasing and most or most natural, I should say, uh, bowed string sound seemed to come from using a bell curve um, filter first of all, uh, and the frequency here is, of course, adjustable. Uh, I've got two sort of main parameters that I adjust, and that's frequency and uh, uh, delay time, which, of course, adjust the resonator size. Um, so all the filters I use are controlled by the same control for frequency. So that's the center frequency for the bell-shaped filter. Now, you may notice here the resonance is actually really, really high, and that is because uh, we are trying to tune the noise um, to more closely follow the frequency that you want. Uh, and one of the ways you do that is by running a noise into a bandpass, or in this case a bell curve filter, and using a very high resonance, which will then amplify and bias the frequencies of the noise, which are all over the spectrum, uh, that correlate with the frequency you want. Uh, and after that stage, it sounds like this. So it's a little bit tuned, but not sort of super, super tuned. 
Uh, and of course, indeed, uh, the bow string or the bow on a string, on a stringed instrument, uh, doesn't in itself create a very specific note. It's the vibration of the string and then the resonance that creates the, the note to a higher extent. But that's enough for us to get a kind of starting point here. Um, the output from this bell curve filter is then run into a delay line, which is our main resonator control. So it's using the audio module delay line rather than the effect delay for this. Um, and the delay line uh, module is set to the shortest maximum time, which is 100 milliseconds, because we only use the really short times for this. Uh, indeed, when you get close to 100 milliseconds, you can actually hear the delay a little bit, and it doesn't sound like a natural vibration of a string anymore. Uh, at the moment, it's at 24.79 milliseconds here. Uh, and that sounds like this. And of course, yes, uh, before I go further, of course, the output of the delay line is then sent into a filter, and this is... A low pass filter so this is our carplus strong resonator here delay line and filter and the output of the filter is both going into the delay line again with a connection strength minus 0 0.6 there and which is 93.32 percent uh, now in my percussion physical modeling video you may have noticed i used less than 80 percent connection strength for this and, and the reason is that because I started with a, a normal oscillator, uh, that means I already have quite a, a bit stronger signal at the frequency that is sent into the resonator, and so it overdrives more easily. Whereas here, because the noise is a little bit more varied, or I would say a lot more varied, um, the connection strength can be higher. And another thing that is quite interesting with this uh, particular patch is how the, the Q, the resonance of the filter here, makes a big difference to the sound. Uh, I'll just play you now. Okay, this is now after the resonator. If I reduce this... You can hear the difference quite quickly. Now it does sound like somebody blowing air into a tube or something like that. But as I increase it, it sounds more and more like a bow string. And it sounds, yeah, that's 0 0.9 is quite high there. You can hear it's almost self-resonating there. So something like 0 0.7 is about right. Uh, and then the output from this filter is sent into uh, another filter. And that is to take a little bit of the... It, you get quite sort of harsh edges on the top here of the sound. You could hear that in the previous uh, example there. If I put this on, you can hear it's a bit more mellow because now I've added a low-pass filter here. Um, is this a low-pass filter, isn't it? Yes, it's a low-pass filter. Um, and the output or the low pass filter then goes into a reverb because it's nice with a bit of reverb at the end. Uh, it's a bit long the delay time there actually. I think to make it sound a bit more natural, something like a second will actually do fine. Um, and that is actually it. That is the whole chain of audio and the rest here is just my controls for controlling it so i've got my control for the frequency and the delay uh, length which is also in a way you can think of as the resonator size And 
the cost. But the controls, this is... Let me think now. Is that... Is attack. It's a slow attack. You're losing the front edge there. But you can make a sort of a slow... Actually, it sounds quite nice with a slow attack. And then it is uh, decay. It will also change the character of the sound. I think it's about right. Where it was um, sustain because this is one of the things that makes a huge difference to the sound because it decides the sustain state when you're holding the note down and I remember for the percussion we had no sustain stage at all like this I'm just going to put this up. It's much faster to put it on note values. Uh, and then it's release. And I think this is quite a natural sounding place to have it as well as 0 0.5. But it is longer. And of course it can be used for, for different effects. Oh, again, I'm forgetting to put it back to... So one of the things I do these days because of how the resolution of the encoder changed in the last software or firmware update, um, a lot of the time it is a lot faster to adjust values in modules by creating a value module and setting it to note value because then it's only got a certain number of values to flick through and it's a lot faster to change values and, and also you have a controller um, can put it on the controller page as well uh, to make it nice and, and neat and tidy. So that is how that works. That is the string patch there. Um, and of course I've got my audio output down here. Um, and that's it really. And the rest of this is just to do with how I demonstrate this. So I've got a button connected to, or a button controller on in my patch connected to this, which is what triggers the ADSR envelope. Um, I got that one back here actually, it just disappeared off a bit. Um, and I've got the mechanism here for these buttons on the side. Uh, to select which part of the audio chain you are listening to. This is for demonstration purposes, of course, so you don't need to include those if you're making this uh, yourself. Um, for those who are curious about it, I might include this in my patch and you can delete it if you want. Um, and you can see how this is, is done. Uh, but I'm not. this is not a tutorial about that, so I'm not going to say anything more about how that works this time. Right, so that is it. Um, more physical modeling on the Zoya, and this time with bowed string sounds uh, or a blowing into a tube kind of sounds, uh, which can all be quite useful, I think. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you find that inspirational and useful or just fun to watch. Um, and uh, if you did, please uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, join me on Patreon or buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. And I will see you again in my next episode where I do something else. Uh, it may be something to do with physical modeling or it may be something entirely different. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.